Today, we will be talking about the massive raid that exists within the Magister's Terrace. This glitch blew me. Oh, away. My notes seem to have not included the word away there. That's kind of awkward. This is episode 2 of the Blood Elf Saga. If you're new to the channel, subscribing always is... And your subscription will get you access to seeing all the new Blood Elf Saga videos and many other glitches in World of Warcraft that are still yet to come. Today you will learn how to perform the glitch, what you can explore in the Autobahns area, and how to access all of the areas in this here cutscene. A little backstory on Magister's Terrace though. I remember when it first came out. It was one of the first times I remember being able to do a hero instance, though I'm pretty sure I was absolutely terrible when I did it. But I definitely remember trying. This place holds so much nostalgia for me, and I hope that I can bring a little nostalgia to everyone else that's watching. How to perform the glitch. When I originally tried to glitch out of bounds in the Magister's Terrace, I already knew that I needed to head to this opening here after the second boss, Vexilus. After you defeat him, we arrive at the opening in which you can watch the cutscene that depicts the entire Sunwell and what's going on there. If I would have watched Hidden Azeroth's video on this place, I would have noticed that the glitch is fairly easy to pull off, but at this point, I had not seen it. I actually missed it on his channel, I didn't realize he had made one. Instead, I tried to glitch out of bounds in multiple different ways, in multiple different areas, and I was kind of shocked at how difficult the area was to escape from. But where there is a demon hunter, there's a way to get out of bounds. If you're an amazing Venthyr Demon Hunter, then you have the magical powers of Double Jump, Glide, Metamorphosis, and Door of Shadows, so you really shouldn't have any problem performing this glitch. If you aren't a Demon Hunter, well, I don't know what to tell you, other than that you might want to get a Demon Hunter if you're going to be exploring World of Warcraft. They're pretty useful. Here's what I discovered in my research. You can jump or use Door of Shadows to get to the top of this little lamp thingy. I don't know what this really would be called. From there, you can jump onto this potted floating plant, and then the invisible wall here only goes so high up. That means that you can easily jump over the wall, and this is why I stated that you would need a Demon Hunter so that you can use the double jump feature to gain enough height to make it over the wall. There's another reason why you would want a Demon Hunter in this area. That will have to do with Hidden Azeroth's video. And now it's time for freedom! Before we travel to the obvious Sunwell Plateau, let's take a look at the rest of the island. I traveled the whole place around and here's what I discovered. The land that the Magister's Terrace is located on is more of a plateau and it looks very strange from the outside. Clearly the Magister's Terrace is bigger on the inside. You can also see these insane floating lasers, which I thought was pretty neat. That's really all there is to that. Of course you can also explore the ocean area, but I really didn't pay too close attention to that. I really don't like underwater exploration. I wish I had a druid if I was going to explore underwater. Instead, I looked at the scenery above me, which was kind of weird. Now, the city looks fairly intact, including the Night Elf boat that was not included in the Out of Bounds area in the Sunwell Plateau. If you haven't seen part 1 of the Blood Elf Saga that covers the Sunwell Plateau, there is a link to it in the description and a card above that you can click, so you can check that out either now or after the video. Okay, well, you guys have seen the Isle of Kultanas before. So I'm not going to show everything off here, but there are some buildings that weirdly have no floor, and other buildings are not properly touching the ground. Typical Blood Elf things, I'm sure. Also, there seems to be something weird in this room, but I just couldn't quite put my foot on it. <laughs> also, uh, sorry, that was a really bad joke. Also, I will note that the Dead Scar looks pretty much the same as it, as it did in the Sunwell Plateau, so I don't really even bother recording it. There's not really much there. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. When are we going to explore the Sunwell Plateau? That will come soon enough. There are a few other things I want to check out first. Mainly, what lies at the very edge of the map. Also, you can like this video and Kel'Thas will personally turn your world upside down. I'll turn your world upside down. I decided to check out the waters beyond these mountains here and it looks like there's a massive wall. You better believe that I'm going to try to travel to it. Wouldn't you? Weirdly and thankfully, there is no fatigue at all when swimming towards it. I was quite surprised by this because usually there is. Well, here we are, the world's edge. Look at this amazing scenery. The water basically disappears. It's beautiful and eerie. And sadly, it's a bit too far of a fall. And if you do what I did, you'll actually trigger the falling 
insta-kill. I truly wish that I could somehow explore this area, so if anyone knows how, leave a comment below. I know that might be a little sketchy glitch there. Maybe get against uh, TOS a little bit there, but I don't know. If you know how to, let me know. I'd be interested. So, I guess that's it. That's the whole video. I, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. Wow. But I did land in the Baron's graveyard, so that's fun. I've got to run all the way back. I guess I have no choice but to get into the Sunwell now. That should be easy. Right? Right? Let's begin. You obviously already know how to get out of bounds, so I'm going to start at the raid entrance inside of the city. Off to a great start here, I guess. Clearly and thankfully the raid portal does not work, so here we are, the Sunwell. But it's completely abandoned. At least the area is. Let's move on up these steps, and thankfully this particular level is quite easy to navigate. I decided to use Spectral Vision here though, just in case there were, I don't know, ghosts or something. But sadly there was not. We keep heading up, and it's still easy street for the moment. Don't worry though, it will not always be this easy. Now we made it to where Brutalis is, or should be. Thankfully we can jump right onto his encounter area, but the stairs are blocked off. We are a demon hunter though, so it really doesn't matter to us. We can easily climb this tree and then jump to the ledge. Great, that's one obstacle out of the way. One of many. Let's continue up the staircase and move on with our lives. I will mention at this point that I was determined to make it all the way into the Sunwell, no matter what. Hint Azeroth climbed a bunch of scaffolding here, but I did not do that. You can watch his video if you want to really see where the Demon Hunter shines in parkour. You'll see what I mean. I definitely chose the harder route in this case. Okay, we reached the Sanguine Chambers and we hit our first true challenge, Agamoth the First Gate. Can I really quickly here just say that it is strange and interesting that they gave a name to the gate? It's incredible that they put that amount of detail in the game. It shows that the developers at this point in WoW's history really, really cared about minor, minor details. I first tried Door of Shadows to get past the barrier, but that completely and utterly failed. Then I jumped around and got to the sledge. I tried to get here for a while so I actually stopped recording for a bit and I think I missed actually landing on the ledge but it should be easy enough for you to perform if you're going to do this glitch. With this new path discovered we can actually parkour around the gate and then we can head towards the witch's sanctum where the Eridor twins would be. Misery. Depravity. Now the spell effects are still on the ground here so that's pretty neat but we do need to continue. We get our first glimpse of the out of bounds NPCs, but we have hit our second hurdle, another gate. As far as I could tell, this one may not have a name, I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments if it is mentioned in the attunement quest or something, uh, because I've never done those. This was the first area that really kind of stumped me. I tried jumping around like a little monkey for like 30 minutes to get past this gate. I tried clipping through the wall, I tried flying over, I had no luck whatsoever. And finally, I did it. Here's the plan. Wall clip into the sledge using Door of Shadows, and then get as close to the gate as possible. Fall past the gate, like actually fall, and then jump onto the ledge with your double jump. That's a little complicated, and Hidden Azeroth's way is a lot easier if you want to do it that way. But you won't cover as much of the Sanmo Plateau. Well, we are here with a with jiggly tongue and butt, and stomach ulcer bro but we cannot interact with them. Let's move past Cerberus but on crack and make our way further into the plateau. Now, this is where things, sorry, Cerberus but on crack. Anyway, this is where things get really interesting. In the scene from earlier, er, earlier, in the scene from earlier, they show a couple of bosses. Well, they're actually in the instance. This is Maru, or Maru, I think, I don't remember how Valon pronounces Maru or something, I don't know, who knows. It's a freaking Naru, so who knows how the name is actually pronounced. Really cool that we can see this. Now, looking over the edge, it's the Sunwell in all of its glory. We are in the final stretch of the journey, and little did I know the most difficult part. There's another gate. So before I continue, I take a good look at the Sunwell, and Avina Teague is floating above the area with Eridar sorcerers below. The Fel Reaver is also running around like a crazy man. Let's try to get in there. I tried lots of ways to glitch my way through, and when Idora shadowed my way onto the lip of the Sunwell, I got completely stuck. This is not fun. I did have some fun screwing around with the selfie camera though. <laughs> oh gosh, the selfie camera. 
When I made my way back to the Sunwall area, I did my absolute best to get into it and was a actually able to using multiple Door of Shadows and just slowly inching my way with each Door of Shadows further in and further into the Out of Bounds area. Eventually, I arrived at a point where I was able to jump in. I then later tried to get out of bounds into this abyss looking ring but was never able to make it. Sad day. Well, this has been the Magister's Terrace Secret in World of Warcraft. I hope everyone watching this has learned something or if you did not learn anything, I hope that you were at least entertained. Thank you for watching.